Ulako, Inubunga, Ubanga Mika Akalok Nato, Kumaksu Tixak, Rankin and Lit Mu Taoyunga, Manakisianio Dawa Mu. Good morning, everybody. My name is Mika Kumaksu Tixak, and I'm originally from the Kivadlek region of Nunavut, but I have been living in Ottawa. Um, so before we begin, we thought we'd get everybody learning at least one word in Inotita with us this morning. Um, so if everybody could repeat after me, U, La, Kut. Now all together, ulakut. Awesome, so if you guys can kind of turn to the person next to you and say ulakut, good morning. Awesome, <laughs> good job everybody. Um, so as you can see, uh, we have our son here today with us. His name is Grayson. He's gonna be performing with us. What I'm wearing is called a summer amounty. Um, so we traditionally carry children on our backs um, for many different reasons. One of the biggest reasons is the Arctic is very cold. So it would keep the baby warm. Um, another reason is children learn through observation. Um, so it's very important that we have our children with us, especially in their early stages, so that they're kind of like identifying with social norms and other things. Uh, and more importantly, we're gonna be doing um, some drumming and some throat singing and a yaya singing today, and that's very soothing for a child. Um, so that's why we have Grayson here with us today. I'm gonna let my partner introduce himself. Thank you, Mika. Uh, my name is Philip Como. I'm from Ikhaluit Nunavut. I've been in Ottawa for the better part of 15 years now. Um, I currently work at Tunga Suvinga Inuit as the family well-being worker. Um, that entitles doing weekly uh, programming, which is like an art music night. So youth will come to the center uh, and we'll do some art, uh, like some crafts, some Inuit crafts. Um, and also we'll try to play some music, so drum dancing or throat singing or um, different local bands. Um, we also do um, monthly events like uh, food bank. So once a month, the, the Inuit community will get together, usually at a church, and we'll have a big, uh, a big feast. So um, it's really nice to have the community together. And also we do uh, annual stuff like um, cherry picking, apple picking, um, Christmas parties, um, you know, you name it. So it's really fun. Uh, it's a great way for Inuit to get together. Um, so like they said earlier, in Ottawa, uh, has the most Inuit uh, living outside of, um, of the north. So uh, with a population of around 4,000, 4,000 Inuit in Ottawa, uh, Tunga Suvinga Inuit is a great place to, uh, to bring Inuit together. So the first song we're gonna be doing for everybody is an Ayaya song. Um, Ayaya songs tell different stories and uh, this one particularly is just for sound. Um, it's for um, everybody to celebrate kind of our identity in this city. So we're gonna begin. Thank you all. I'm just gonna have Philip explain a little bit about his drum before we move into our next song. Thank you. Um, so traditionally, um, drums were made in the past out of um, caribou bone, <coughs> excuse me, or um, animal hide. So the, the material here would usually be made out of animal hide and it would vary, sorry about a breath. <coughs> And it would vary between regions, so seal or caribou 
um, and you would stretch that and put it on before you play each time. And um, you'd have to oil it, take care of it, and take it off um, before you put it away. And um, the wood parts would be made out of bone. And usually they would be a lot bigger than this. Um, but uh, the reason why we make them out of wood now, because it's a lot lighter, a lot easier to play, and it's a lot easier to take care of. So traditionally, these drums used to be a lot bigger and used to be a lot heavier. So if you've ever seen any um, old traditional pictures of Inuit dressed up in caribou or in polar bear or in seal, um, and they're drumming and they have the drum all the way down there, and the reason why they're swinging so much is because they have to use their whole body to move the drum because the drums were a lot heavier back then. So I guess I'm lucky and I get to use a wood drum these days. <laughs> so there's three forms of throat singing. Um, there's competition songs, there's a lullaby and a love song, and there's imitation songs. Um, we're going to be performing two of those songs today. The first one we're going to be doing is a imitation song. We're going to be imitating the sound of a river. Um, so we'd actually ask every single person in this room, and I'm going to look around the room, to close your eyes, and we'd like you to imagine the sounds of a river or that a river could make. So if everyone can close your eyes, please. Thank you. Thank you. So another really important thing about throat singing, um, can everyone say katachak? Awesome, that's actually throat singing in Inuktitut, Katachak. So the really important thing about throat singing, it's traditionally a game played between two women. Um, so Philip and I, for our last uh, kind of song that we're gonna share, we're going to compete against each other. Um, so the idea of a competition song is to see who laughs first or who stops first. Um, so Philip's gonna be drumming and I'm going to be throat singing Kimagalapik. So if Philip laughs first or stops, he does not win. <laughs> and we have to look in each other's eyes the entire time. Mm-hmm. 
Thank you guys so much for having us with you this morning. We hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you.